Hello everybody. This presentation will help you to revise your topic about radioactivity and half-life. This contains questions from past papers and how they are answered. Here is the first problem. An atom consists of a nucleus made up of protons and neutrons surrounded by orbiting electrons. The first question is, which of these particles has a positive charge? Obviously, the answer is proton. Next, which two of these particles have almost equal mass? The answers are proton and neutron. Letter B. A silver nucleus is denoted by this symbol. State the number of protons and the number of neutrons in this nucleus. Everybody knows that the subscript in the symbol represents the number of protons. So in this case, the number of protons is equal to 47. Now, the superscript represents the mass number and the mass number is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons so if the mass number is equal to 107 and the number of protons is equal to 47 then the number of neutrons is equal to 60. The graph shows part of the decay curve of a radioactive nuclide. The count rate is plotted against time. Use the graph to find the half-life of this nuclide. The graph shows that it starts at the count of 320. The half of 320 is 160. So locating 160, let us start with 100. Each line counts 10. So from 100, let us go up to the sixth line and there is 160. Let us draw a line for us to easily find the time it takes to have. From 5, every two lines count 1. So you have 6, 7, 8, and 9. The line of 160 falls to 8 hours. And that means that the half-life of this nuclide is 8 hours. Plot two more points on figure 11.1 at times greater than 10 hours. Use a dot in a circle to indicate each point. From 160, if we continue to get half of it, we will have 80. Since the half-life is 8 hours, then from 160, it falls to 80 after 8 hours, which means that it takes place after 16 hours. Continuing the same process, after another 8 hours, which means that 24 hours has passed. From 80, it falls to 40. So the two dots are placed in 80 counts and 16 hours, and the other one is in 40 counts and 24 hours. Let us proceed to the next problem. The figure shows the main components of a cathode ray oscilloscope. State the purpose of the heater. The heater is used to heat the cathode.
What about the purpose of the cathode? Cathode is used to emit electrons. Or, it is used to undergo thermionic emission when heated. What about the anode system? The anode system is used to attract or accelerate electrons. Or, it is used to allow electrons or beam to pass through the screen. Or, it is used to focus the beam or to direct the beam or to produce a straight beam. D. Without deflection, the electron beam produces a spot at the center of the fluorescent screen. A deflection of the spot towards the top of the screen is required. Describe how the gamma plates can be used to bring about this deflection. The potential difference, or the voltage, or the battery, or the power supply is applied between or across the plates. The upper plate is positive and the lower plate is negative. Figure 11.2 shows the gamma plates. Sketch the pattern of the electric field produced between the plates. In these gamma plates, let us mark the upper plate positive and the lower plate negative. Then, draw arrows pointing downwards or from positive to negative. Problem number three. In a laboratory secure radioactivity cupboard are two unlabeled radioactive sources. A scientist knows that one is an alpha emitter and the other is a beta emitter, but is not sure which is which. A radiation detector, a magnet, and some paper are available. Briefly describe two different experimental tests using this equipment which would allow the scientist to identify which is the alpha emitter and which is the beta emitter. We are going to present our answer in this table. The first test is set up the source and the detector, then put the paper between them. What is the outcome? Alpha is absorbed while beta is not. The next test is Set up the magnet near the source. What is the outcome? Beta is deflected much more at opposite direction. B. Radioactive carbon-14 decays by emitting beta particles. What are the values of the proton and the nucleon numbers of carbon-14? Based on our previous discussion, the subscript represents the number of proton. So in this case, the number of proton is equal to 6. The nucleon number is another term for mass number. So the nucleon number is equal to 14. Carbon-14 is absorbed by living organisms. When the organism dies, no more carbon-14 is absorbed. The carbon-14 already absorbed decays with a half-life of 5,730 years. Recent human skeletons have an activity of 64 units, but a human skeleton dug up by an archaeologist has an activity of 8 units. Determine the age of this ancient skeleton. Let us start with 64 units. If it undergoes decay, the half of it is 32 and the given 
half life is 5730 years if another half life will take place 32 units will fall to 16 after another 5730 years or that is equal to 11460 years as the process continues 16 units will fall to 8 units, adding another 5,730 years. This time, it takes 17,190 years. So, the age of this ancient skeleton is 17,190 years problem number four in a laboratory at a nuclear power station a radiation detector is connected to a computer the readings recorded are displayed on the computer screen the detector is switched on 10 minutes later at time t is equal to 10 minutes a small sample of radioactive material is removed from a nuclear reactor and placed near to the detector. Readings are recorded for a further 40 minutes. Figure 11.1 shows the display. Take a look at it. Use figure 11.1 to determine the background count rate in the laboratory. It was mentioned that the detector was switched on after 10 minutes. So, what does the data prior to 10 minutes represent? It represents the background count rate. Hence, the background count rate is equal to 12 counts per minute. Again, we will use figure 11.1 but this time to determine the count rate due to the radioactive sample at 10 minutes. At 10 minutes, you will see on the graph that the count rate goes up to 84. Knowing that the 12 count rate is of background, so 84 minus 12 is equal to 72. The count rate due to sample at 10 minutes is equal to 72 counts per minute. Let us use the same graph to determine the count rate at 19 minutes. Let us locate 19 minutes on the graph. And here it is. At 19 minutes, it gives a count rate of 21. Knowing that the 12 count rate was contributed by the background radiation, so 21 minus 12 is equal to 9. The count rate due to sample at 19 minutes is equal to 9 counts per minute. Use the values obtained in B to estimate the half-life of the radioactive sample. At 10 minutes, we have 72 counts. If these 72 counts fall into half, it gives 36 counts. Half of 36 is 18. And if 18 counts decay, it will give 9 counts. It is known that 9 counts were obtained after 19 minutes. You will see that it takes 3 half-lives to reach 9 counts. So from 72 counts that occurs at 10 minutes, 
adding 3 minutes to 10 gives 13 minutes. Plus another 3 minutes gives 16 minutes. 16 minutes plus 3 minutes is 19 minutes. So the half life is equal to 3 minutes. I hope that you have learned something. This is Teacher Rose of Woodrose International School. Bye.